Hey friends, this is David Bedrick, and um, this is Unchained TV, where I will be um, interviewing, working with, coaching, some people would say, uh, dreaming with, I would say, um, a client kind of person. They're not exactly my client, they're a guest on the show. Welcome uh, friends for joining. Great to see some of you here. I appreciate it. Um, my guest, uh, his name is David, also will be joining me in a few minutes and then we'll find out what he's up to, what kind of help uh, he is wanting or what he wants to focus on. And then I will do my best to unshame what he's looking at and see if we can discover something in the midst of, um, of those difficulties. That's what I'm hoping for and um, intending on. So um, I always start with a line or two from Galway Canal, the poet whose poem, St. Francis and the Sow, begins with the line, the bud stands for all things. The bud, that means the thing of, that can flower, the seed of the leaf that unfolds. And the whole idea to that line of poem, in my brain, in my heart, is that things are like a bud. And when you look at a difficulty, whether it's a headache, I had a headache this morning, or a depression, or a relationship difficulty, or an addiction, that there's a bud in there. That doesn't mean it's a good thing to be addicted or have difficulties or be depressed. It means that if we look inside of that and give it the right kind of sunshine, water, love, actually, unshaming, is a loving act, it's a witnessing, then perhaps that bud will, um, uh, will unfold, right? It's folded in and it'll unfold and show something inside of it. In fact, the medicine for the ill, the medicine that cures that ill, I'm calling it ill, meaning the, the suffering uh, might just be inside of that. And many people have that idea in spiritual uh, notions, a roomy kind of notion, a crack in the vessels where the light gets in, a wounded healer and things like that. So um, I'm going to invite David now and, um, uh, um, oops. Um, and, uh, what is this? Uh, I'm going to some of your fellows. Get another, uh, uh, let me see if I can get my friend David here, uh, to join us. So hold on a second. David. And then his, um, Let's see if that's going to get us there. Um, uh, week. Whoops. Hold on a second, friends. Thanks for just giving me a moment. I'm still getting used to this uh, process. Um, I think I got to do. How do I got to do that? I got to do that. Nope. Um, Darn that. Okay. P card and um, thanks, friends, for hanging in while I um, and why aren't I seeing him here? I'm not seeing him here. And um, I'm not sure why. David, are you around? Um, oh, Shay, we weren't supposed to have you on there. I'm sorry. <laughs> Good thing I was uh, behaving myself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what happened there. Um, and I don't know how to make that change. Oh, sorry, friends. Sorry, Shay, I, I, have to, I have to take you off somehow. Um, uh, da, 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 I don't know how to do that. 
<laughs> You're stuck with me. Maybe I should leave and come back? Yeah, could you leave and come back? Maybe that would help. I'm. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Sorry, I, somehow that invite happened that wasn't intentional. Okay, um, sorry friends, let me just um, try one more time. Please hang out. Um, I don't see him and that's not so good. Um, okay, let me just make sure I have it all right. Um, um, David uh, slash. So I don't see him. That's not a good sign. So um, maybe, maybe, maybe Shay was supposed to be in there. Um, let me just see if I can. Uh, um, this is not okay. David, it's underscore. B card and so he's not here. So um, maybe it was supposed to be Shay. <laughs> hey Shay, uh, um, I'm going to bring you back in, Shay. And maybe if would you let me ask her? Um, maybe it's just going to be that way, right? Um, Hey Shay. Hey. <laughs> would you would you like to explore anything t today that was not the plan, but you're here for yeah, some reason? Life me. did that. If you don't need to, there's no pressure because it's a public scene and stuff. Yeah. But if you want to, you know me, I always have stuff to dig up and dive into. I always have stuff. Okay. <laughs> Great. And any chance to work with you? Yay. <laughs> Okay, everybody, we're making a little change. Thank you, Shay, a lot for uh, for jumping in. Would you be able to to move back from your camera so we can see you a little bit better? Because because I sometimes work with the body. That's why I'm back a little bit. Then it's good to see a little bit more of you. I'm I'm in bed because I'm flattened today. So uh, okay. Taking some adjustment here, but okay, make a few adjustments, and I'm gonna see if I can uh, see you better. There we go. Hey, Shay. Hey. Good to see you, David. <laughs> Welcome. Is that all right? I know okay. we won't have. I, I, I just want to just because we haven't, you know, everybody else who's gone in has been given information and vetted. Vetted means that they know this is live. They know this is a public space. Uh, they know that that this is not like therapy in the sense that we're going to be working together past this time. There's no so I just want to tell you that because that that information wasn't given to you beforehand, and I don't want you to have a expectation or something that's different uh, or an unhappiness. I know we know each other, so I know there's a good feeling, but I just wanted to make sure we have your consent to that uh, opening. Mm -hmm, definitely. Wouldn't be here otherwise. That's, that's good. Cool. Yeah. What's what's on your? What can we? What can we? Me you and yeah. Me. I got a little fumbled <laughs> because of the thing didn't go the way we thought. What? Um, yeah. What would you want help with, if anything? <laughs> Everything. Um. Everything I'm, is a good I'm, answer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm really. Working on agency. Um, agency. Agency, like reclaiming my agency seems to be a really important part of healing from uh, complex trauma. Yeah. Uh, agency. And, and I'm butting against a system that doesn't want me to have agency. It stripped me of it and it's trying to prevent me from having it. And, right. pissed off. and what was the last part? And I'm pissed off. And you're pissed off. I always like being, I like being with people who are pissed off, especially if they're not pissed off at me, but even that can be an okay <laughs> if they're my friends, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Agency, reclaiming agency. Shay's talking about trauma and agency and reclaiming it. That means, and she says, there's something that would limit that, take that, steal that. 
That's, that's a system. It's not a person, although people channel that. It's a system. Mm -hmm. What okay. would it be like to have agency? Mm, it would feel so good in my body. Just thinking about it made me feel really good. Um, that's... <clears throat> Yeah, it would um it would help me stand up straighter and breathe more and wow um, <clears throat> feel more free and safe. Stand straighter, freer, breathing and safe. That's great. And everybody, the reason why I asked that is because if we're going to unchain something, then the basic assumption is that I don't know what a person is talking about until they tell me experience. So I don't know what she means by safe. It could be very different than David's sense of safe. I didn't know what she meant by agency. I have ideas, but I don't want my ideas. I want to know what her experiences are because shame always has opinions, but doesn't want to know, doesn't take the time to say, what is it like? What are you really, what are you hungry for? So we know what it's really like. That's really big in addictive processes. And we're not in an addictive process, but an addictive process, very few people are asked, what's it like? to put a needle in your arm, smoke a cigarette, drink three martinis. That doesn't mean I'm saying that's a good thing. It means I want to know what the person is, is experiencing. Yeah, standing straighter, being freer, breathing in a different, deeper way, and feeling safer. See if you can stay with that feeling. I know it's not all the time that you have that and, and you want more of it. But let's see if we can connect with it before some, the system comes in and tries to take it. We'll have to bring that in in a minute because that's part of your world. Mm -hmm. But let's, let's hang with the standing, straighter, freer, breathing, safer experience. Mm -hmm. Hang out with that. You said you feel it in your body. Stay in the body experience of that. You might even it's hard for me to stay in this experience because it's scary. Um, oh. <laughs> it feels so different, you know, than what I'm used to. Uh huh. Um, That's important. You're used to a different experience, not standing straighter, feeling freer, feeling safer. You're used to that experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know that experience pretty pretty well. Mm -hmm. Many of us know that experience well. Mm -hmm. Not exactly yours, but that one of not feeling our own agency, empowerment, freedom, safety. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See if you can make contact with it again, even a little bit, even if it's hard to stay there. Catch glimpses of it, of the feeling, and then tell me what those glimpses are like. Mm -hmm. Solidifying. Uh huh. It helps me feel more solid inside. Solid. Uh -huh. And where is the solidness inside of you? When it, when it is there, I know it may be fleeting. Where is it living? Is it in your arms or your All belly? Or... My core. My whole core. Your whole core. And you're putting your hand yeah. like from here, like the chest down to... Yeah, all the way down, yeah. All the way down, like to the ground or down to your gut? Or... To my groin, yeah all the way down from here to here uh-huh and go ahead Shay. imagine that we could amplify that solidity that goes all the way down even if it's not exactly true we can't make it up but your body knows what it's like a little bit so we're counting on that we're not trying to fake it we're just trying to support something that already lives inside of Shay because she tells me it lives inside of her Mm -hmm. And imagine that that solidness all the way down could become even a little bit more solid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That feels really good. I feel uh -huh. it in my gut. <clears throat> Great. Yeah. Great. Let, let your awareness be close to your gut and that solidness. Mm hmm I know it can be fleeting. Like we're not denying that there's a system that makes that hard. We're going to definitely get to that. But first, we want to know what it is that you're trying to get to. It's really important that we know. It's my life force. Uh-huh. 
It's your life force yes. that I didn't know. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. No. No. That's fascinating already. We start with the word agency, and now we've moved to something that has more meaning for Shay and to me. It's my life force. It, it comes in a solidness from up here and down and into the gut. Mm -hmm. And stay with that life force. You said you like it. Let, your, let yourself enjoy having it for a moment. Oh, this feels good. Just have the happiness, the joy, the relief, the good feeling of it. It Almost really feels like great. It's so hard for me to separate the, that great feeling from the grief of not having it. Like every time I, I start it. to feel it, the grief comes in. I understand. And I'm not against feeling grief. We could easily, we could, I'm just saying this to you, Shane, to everyone, we could easily spend the session, so to speak, on the grief, but, I, but, you, but you know that grief very well. That's the only reason. I'm not trying to diss it or bypass it. It's only that I want to make sure we unshame other aspects. Shay knows the grief aspect. She said that's a usual experience. So that's the only reason I'm not spending more time there. I want to spend time with the things that are less known. Again, not because grief is not as good, just because it's not, grief is more known to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's yeah, hold it. I have a lot more curiosity about. Yes, dear grief, we love you and interested in you. We want to care about you, but can you please give this other state some time? And I promise we, we're not marginalizing you. We're thinking you shouldn't have grief. We just want to connect with the thing that you're grieving of not having. And there's a good feeling. It's a life force and the good feeling. Mm -hmm. It's very important to, to have a good feeling about states that are difficult because we not only don't have the state all the way until it's unshamed, but then we don't kind of go, oh, and I'm enjoying this. <laughs> this feels good. And that's a very important thing. Like a, like a child who says, I'm feeling this, and then this is a celebration. Wow, that life force looks good and people should be happy about that, right? Today was a bad day. Oh, I'm sad for you. Today was a good day. Oh my gosh, let's, here's the chocolate cake and whatever. Okay, whatever. Here's a, here's some ice cream. Here's a little party about that good feeling. We want to cultivate yeah. that good feeling, the enjoyment, the, the the life force energy, and the enjoyment of it. Mm -hmm. And stay with that life force and enjoying it. We're pouring. That's where the shame comes in. The enjoyment of my life force. Yeah, I was thinking that. Not allowed. Not allowed. It's a very subtle thing we're talking about. I'm saying this to Shay and to everyone, that when someone has an experience that they can make contact with pretty quickly, Shay can make contact with the life force energy that took a little couple of seconds to get there, but not long. But then the enjoyment of it, because enjoyment of an experience is a part of the mastery of experience, the ownership of an experience, because a good experience comes with a certain pleasure or joy or relaxation or wellness. And we want her to have that wellness part also, feeling well. If you're used to feeling unwell, right? You have complex PTSD. If you're used to feeling unwell, feeling life force is unusual, but feeling well. Wow, I feel, I'm using the word well, happy, joyous, healthy, whatever. There's a wellness that goes with it. That would be a really great experience. And then a shame comes in there. Let's see if we can keep the shame out for a little longer. We, maybe we can't. And tell me what the wellness, let's forget about the life force a little bit, not forget, but what's the wellness like? If you would make a vision, of, what would the vision of wellness be like? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Of course, it would be like sailing. <laughs> It'd be like sailing, right? I know, I know. Yeah, you that's... know that. <laughs> yeah. Right. The wellness is like, isn't that incredible, friends, that her wellness, she knows that in a specific way. And why am I asking what her wellness is like? Again, unshaming. James just says, I don't need to know anything. She feels well, I feel well. It's the same thing. But it's not. <laughs> My wellness is not sailing. It's something else. But hers is sailing. Uh-huh. Tell us about what it's like to sail. Can you take your mind 
and dreaming there for a moment. Be sailing. Let yourself be on a sailing ship at the moment and bring us along. What are we doing? Are we feeling the wind? Are we doing a task? Are we laughing and screaming with other people? What are we doing? We're all doing our jobs individually, but as a group, and we're all connected because of the boat um, and because of our love of sailing. Mm -hmm. And um, when the conditions are just right and the captain says, turn off the engines and the generators, and it's just us and the boat and the wind and the sails and the sea, um, it's just transformative. It's like you feel connected to all the sailors that came before and all the sailors that will come after wow. and the world and the people. And, and yet you're in this boat. That's like your whole life, a little dot on the ocean, like whatever's happening out there in the world, you have no idea. And it doesn't matter because you're on this boat together and you count on each other. Your lives depend on each other. And so you get along, even if you come from different belief systems, because that's what being shipmates does. Jay, it touches me so deeply. I have, I, have, I have thoughts, but I just want to, but my body is feeling so much. I, I'm not a very hopeful type person, Jay. You know, I'm not like a big downer, but I often, I'm not, the, I'm not amongst the optimists about where we're heading, you know? I'm not putting that down. So I really, I rarely have a sense of hopefulness about where the, whatever, planet and issues are heading. But I noticed I had a sense of hope because you're offering a vision. You, you took me on a vision of a different kind of system. We're all doing our job and you're talking about being together. We're shipmates together. We're connected together. It's a wind and sails and sea, but there's also the connectedness of the, of the creatures, the people, the... Yeah, yeah. and the connection to the, the vessel and the environment. And when, when the captain does that, turns off everything, everybody starts to whisper because they don't want to break the spell. Oh, now I want to whisper, but I don't, I'm going to whisper a little loud because I want to make sure everybody hears. We're in a very special place. I want to whisper this, stay, Jay, stay with it. Stay with where you are. You see, everybody, there's a system that takes agency, steals it, traumatizes. But Shay is offering a new vision. See, in her a desire for agency is not just for herself, we learned. It's for our new system where we're all doing our job. We're connected to the sea. We're connected to the ship. We're connected to each other. We're all doing our job. And we whisper. And there's a certain spell that we're in. This is a new world. I'm not, I'm not just saying that, Shay, everybody. That's a vision of a new world. And we need dreamers, visionaries of new worlds, people who know what the problems of the old system. And then we need people who see a new world, a new possibility. I often think of, of uh, the African-Americans and the creation of jazz. They said, we know something about the difficulty of this United States, but we know a new vision. You play your sax, I'll play my drums. Sometimes you'll go off and I'll be just keeping the rhythm and you'll be doing your thing. And then you'll come back down and you'll keep the rhythm and I'll do a drum solo. But we're together and connected in a special thing. So that came out of a suffering community, a marginalized community. And you're having the same experience in that way, out of this grief and trauma and being stolen from is a vision of a kind of connectedness and a whispering magical intimacy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's incredible. That alone, you have to know that about yourself, Shay, that you're a visionary. That's very important. When you're in your lack of agency, you have to know that you have a vision, not just for yourself, but for the greater something, <laughs> the greater yeah. humanity or the greater planet. Mm -hmm. It's That's so it. true. I, I do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I really do. The the stuff that I teach about the interpersonal neurobiology and trauma is to basically to help people learn how to 
help each other heal through safe connection. Yeah. Yeah. Healing the traumas and then make sure you go the next step. And this is the world we want to create. Yes. So we're focusing on, we're not marginalizing the grief and the trauma, like we were talking about today, but we're not letting it take up 100% of the space. 90%, mm -hmm. sometimes 100 because it's new, person doesn't know it yet. But then over time, make sure that you honor how painful the trauma and the grief is and have grief circles and cry and scream and make community around the hell. And don't forget to vision something that's not that. Mm -hmm. That's very, very important, often left out of the idea of healing. Healing means most people, let's get rid of the difficulties, which I understand. Let's get relief. I want you to get relief. I want relief for my suffering. And there won't be enough relief without a vision of a different world that's also pregnant. Um, it's amazing, Shaya. I'm so inspired by that. You're a visionary talking about your vision. I got to ask you, we got to go one more place in my mind. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to tell you, Shay, and everybody, one thing that's still not owned by Shay, she's a, in the story she's telling today, there's many things that we don't know and I don't know, but there's one thing that's not owned yet, which means a kind of shame might disallow it. Not the shame like, oh, I feel bad about myself. Might disallow it is the captain noticing Shay and everybody that Shay says, there's a captain. And she doesn't say, I am the captain. I know what it's like to captain. I embody captainness. <laughs> that's, that's not quite her yet, it's something else. So that means there's a line between her and captain and captain means a kind of a leadership. So, mm -hmm. and even she has a vision, she's a visionary and feels a lack of agency I'm thinking the agency might flow through, not just I'm here, I'm powerful, that's a great. The system can't steal my thunder voice, that's great. The system can't take my vision, that's great. And then one more thing, I'm a leader, a captain. We need the leadership, your agency has leadership taking us, I'm on the ship. And I need you at times to take me somewhere. Mm -hmm. Now you've really found where the shame comes in. Uh huh. How do you know that? I believe you. T t tell me how you know the shame comes in. As soon in. as you said leadership, I started to tear up and feel shame. Mm hmm. And, the, and the, my body said, oh, no, no, that's not acceptable. It's not yeah. Acceptable. Not acceptable. And that's you can of course, follow. a learned response. <laughs> that's not my, that's the colonialism inside of me. Isn't it? You can follow, but leading, that's a, belongs to somebody else, a male person or a, I don't know, whatever. Somebody else that has a certain kind of characteristics. They are the leaders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and not me. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can go one more step. Mm -hmm. The captain. What did you say the captain said? The captain turns off the engine, I think. Yes, yeah, she said. said to turn off the engines and the uh, generators. Uh -huh. And go ahead, Shay. Begin to say to me, to all of us, turn off the engines and the generators. Just let the words come out of your mouth and then keep going if you can. Okay. I'm on the, I'm in the crew. I'm one of the sail shipmates here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's great. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, turn off the engines and the generators so we can sail free. Tell me, I, I'm new to this sailing place. Tell me more. What do I do then? You whisper so you don't destroy the magic. Oh. And, and that helps you feel more um, connected to each other and the magic. Oh, thank you. I forget about the magic. And that's why the whispering. Then after we stop with all the engines and the doing and the pushing and the trying and healing and all that stuff, then turn off all the engines and then whisper because there's magic. 
and connection is not in only the doing part. We're all putting up the sails and taking care of things. But then there's a magic that comes in the connection. Yeah, the interconnectedness of everybody. It's that feeling when that happens, it's, it, it reminds me of um, a flock of birds, you know, how they'll just suddenly change direction as if they're all thinking the same thing. Yeah, yeah it's that same kind of interconnectedness, interconnectedness where we're all on the same wavelength. This thing just happens. Like nobody says, hey, everybody be quiet. Nobody actually says that. It just happens because the magic is there and we're tuned into it and each other. The magic. What do you, what do you know about the magic? You know, it's it's the connecting thing. Is there? I'm a newbie. Tell me more about magic. I kind of believe in hard work a little bit. Wake me up to the magic. I actually, yeah. parts of me, true, I'm, I'm playing, but also part of me was taught you have to work hard for everything, David, which is good. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I didn't learn about magic. Yeah, um, this kind of magic. Um, unfolds uh, in places of safety where people feel safe to be who they are and express themselves um, oh. and be accepted and uh, share experiences. Mm -hmm. I don't know about safety. I don't know that I have much experience of safety. Even when I'm alone, I don't feel only safe. I'm just, I'm also, I'm fooling, I'm, I'm joining you a little bit, but it's also true. Parts of me don't, doesn't have much safety, even in my own inner world. I wake up in the middle of the night, Jay, moan every night. It's not only safe inside of me, even. Never mind outside in the world. Yeah. Help me, help lead me, help me understand safety or how to have it, or can I get it in the world that we live in? Yeah. Um, safety is, is not the absence of threat. It's the presence of connection. Oh. We're designed to be connected oh. with each other and our world. Oh, God. And it's the, the disruptions to that that make us feel unsafe. That's deep. That's very deep. I often think, Jay, safety is something I work on. I do my inner work or my therapy, go to therapy or do something, and then I get more safety and then I, there is a little bit more of that i'm more connected with myself but you're saying safety is about connection it can't only i think you're saying i can't only get it in, inside myself and then be totally safe am i understanding you right yeah we we need as as human beings as primates as mammals we need to to feel that safe connection to to even exist if we don't have it uh, to an extreme, we like disappear. Wow. Like, like the babies that die from lack of connection. Yeah. The orphans in Russia and all. Um, That's deep. It's the, it's mm -hmm. that lack of safety. Mm -hmm. That's deep. Thank you for talking about that. And, and for the safety brings the healing. Mm -hmm. That's really deep. I'm so used to getting, I've made a, efforts at getting along in an unsafe world. That's not a bad thing to be able to do. I'm not thinking that's sure. bad. Practically and, superhuman. <laughs> I worked at that and I do more or less. Sometimes I don't, sometimes I do inside and out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but that's interesting. But then I have to have my dukes up all the time. It's good to have dukes, you know, fists and yeah. I mean that strength and fighting. But then that's, but sometimes my arms are so tired. They want to relax. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just feel and, safe and feel safe, and then connection happens. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I know we could go further, Jay. I just want to say, I want to give a little mini summary to people about what we're doing. Jay says, I want to connect with agency in a given, given complex trauma and a system that's not agency friendly. <laughs> it's not saying, have agency, we would love you to have that. It's not doing that. And we could have gone into that battle and the pain and difficult difficulties of the trauma. Shay's worked a lot on the trauma. I know that, so that, but that's still, I'm not bypassing that. I'm not thinking. And then some grief comes up, but I'm still interested in an experience that she, that may 
be less known, meaning shame may be around it. And that's the agency itself. And we went into the agency. She said she feels it. And it was a life force. That alone could be amazing. We could have hung out with that life force. But then there was, a, she said a couple of times, it feels good. And when I unshame with somebody, I follow them. And she mentioned it feels good a number of times. So I said, let's go to the good feeling. Not because I think that's the right thing, but because she led me there a couple of times. So I said, okay, let's go to the wellness then. And she said, the shame around not even feeling good about how I feel. That's a special feeling. So we went there. There was a solidness, a good feeling in there. And then I asked her more about that good feeling. So we unshame that. We get to know the experience. That's what unshaming means, not the idea. And then she's on a sailing ship. And then we learn something about the sailing ship. One is that she's a visionary and a leader. And she understands something about connection and safety. Those are incredible teachings that she has in her. All of that pregnant in the bud of agency. Some parts of I want agency. And what she's wanting, what she means now I can say is, I want to be on the sailing ship. I want to lead. I want to vision a new world. I want to take people places. I want to show you the connection with safety and connecting to all things and people. So that's what, that's what she's telling me now. Now I know so much more about that. Where if we stop with, oh, agency, let me help you feel powerful. I wouldn't know about connection and magic and safety and visionariness and all these actual leadership qualities um, that I got to know from, from hanging out with you. Shay, that's amazing. You want I know I'm, I'm talking a bunch because I'm, because I do, you know, I'm a talker, you know, that, but I'm trying to offer people a, a, an experience, live experience, and then some ideas about what shame and unshaming are really about. Do you want to say anything or ask anything before we close? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would just like you to say something about the importance of um, rage and anger and maybe agency because they mm -hmm. definitely drive my, my need for agency and my ability to reclaim it. Yeah, I'll say a couple of, there's so much that could be a whole whatever five week yeah. class or one hour but <laughs> so many people need an unshaming witness around anger and rage because they're so maligned this is a bad thing this is something to overcome to get rid of to manage right and some people do need to manage it to the extent that they don't hurt other people so that's not, I'm not suggesting people like, let go of your rage and smash children if you're angry at them or oh, whoever. That's not, that's not what I mean. But, but those things, those ex feeling experiences need to be known. And it's a safety issue at the beginning, Shay. That means we have to make a space. So if you say I'm full of rage today or I, there's a lot of rage in me, if somebody says that, then I think, how can we make an ex a space for the rage to be experienced, not for the rage to be managed. Now we have to make a place where you, there are no children or whoever it's gonna be, right? So that no one's going to take the brunt and I'm gonna be safe with you. So however, we're gonna manage that, you know, so that you can let go into that, but you and me and whoever's there are not gonna get injured. And there, so that's the safety issue. And then what we need to do in that space is get to know, just like we got to know the agency, what's this rage like? What does it do? Is it scream? Does it punch? Does it holler? Is it full of fire? Is it full of big waves that, that topple things over? I don't really know. Then we'd have to get to know those big energies that live inside of you. And then once we do that, we might be able to say, how can you begin accessing those? Where, does those, where do those energies belong? And I'm using the word, Shay, belong, as opposed to where can you channel it? Because it's not just a conscious thing. I should put it over here. That's fine. But, the, but the, these energies themselves want to go somewhere. If I say, I want to use it towards getting a red Corvette, maybe that's great for me because that's what I've been wanting. But my rage might not care about the red Corvette. It might, be, it might care about changing systems <laughs> or mm -hmm. leaving a relationship or not hating myself so much every day. So we have to ask those feelings what they're wanting to do. Um, that's a very important thing. When working with rage, it's often important to go to have the person feel that 
and begin, I often begin by going into the expression of it. Once you feel it, I go into the expression of it often in slow motion. Why? Because I'm like, let's say this is my rage. Ah! Right? And it's going to just, and I want to like start smashing my computers and ending all the technology in the world. Okay, great. So I know that's, that's a cool thing. Sometimes I want to do that. But then I want to, the reason why slow motion is because then I can start developing a witness, not a shaming witness. This is what it's like. Oh, I, now I feel the muscle in my arm. Now I feel the shoulder. Now I feel, so the slow motion, not the reducing of the intensity, the slow motion helps me become much more intimate with the experience. So I'm not stifling it, but I'm getting to know it, moving it. And then movement, I'm not saying too many things. Well, the last thing is movement is often very helpful. People usually can't sit still and meditate on rage. They can need to meditate on movement, stand, begin to express it so that you're mo moving. Because the rage is not a stable, uh, an unmoving thing. It's a moving thing. It's a big energy. It's a big wave, right? It's a big fire. Yeah, anyway, those are just some things. So to... I love I love the way you talk about it. It gets me so excited because what you're saying is in in interpersonal neurobiology terms is we're integrating that part of ourselves. We're integrating and, it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that I have to tell you the the shadow work that we've done. Uh oh. I don't know what happened here. Oh yeah, yeah, I think it's coming back. The, the shadow work that we did has been so vital. And um, yeah. I realize now that that yeah. what you were doing was helping me to integrate my shadow. It's now yeah. part of me rather than a rejected um, something set off to the side. Yeah. It's and very it's important. So important. It's important to talk And it's about really anger. what's kept my life force going through all this stuff that's been done to me. Amazing. Yep, anger and rage are, are important to focus on partly because of social issues like sexism and racism, which then are cultural forces, systems that say, and you're a woman and it's especially bad, right, for, for you and whatever, will burn you at the stake or whatever, you know, those kinds of stories that we know, or if you're a black person and you look raging, then there's a racial uh, bigotry that comes in. That's an angry, militant black person. You know, sorry, everybody, you know what I mean by that? That those, those so cultural forces. Um, but I want to say one more thing about shadow. Working on the shadow of rage and anger, if that's a shadow, meaning unconscious. But we also just worked on your shadow. Your, your captainship and leadership is also in the shadow. Those are not what we think of as negative qualities, but, but they're still split off for you to go that far into your visionary leadership is also pushed away, put somewhere, put into a bag where I, I sometimes use the word shadow bag. It's put into the shadow bag. Okay, let's take that from her so she doesn't think she's a visionary leader. She can think she can feel better a little bit and maybe have some agency, but she can't be captaining the ship of, of, of many lives. We won't give her that freedom mm -hmm. i just wanted to say that yeah thank you i love that yeah shadow bag yeah the shadow bag Who knows what's in there <laughs> yeah lots of stuff hey everybody and jake thank you so much for being here shay thank you for being yeah, in the moment you, David. Uh, and thank just you. entering and, <laughs> and being willing to play and explore and dream together thanks everybody for watching share i'll have it'll be the recording will be on my ig account please share it with people so that this uh, TV experience. I'll be doing it twice a month. Can 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 spread out there. Bye. Okay. Are you sure?